Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Crystals and Cocktails. I've got my wine with me. I'm going to juice it up with a little rose quartz. Let that stir around a little bit. And tonight with me, I have a very uh, special guy. It's not often we get a guy who is into crystals and so talented with it. And um, his name is Jude Heslin DeLeo. Yes, his last name means lion. Don't feel bad about it. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how it goes. I may diverge later. <laughs> so how are you? I'm, I'm great. How are you? Good. Um, so I was just talking about you a little bit before you jumped on and just mentioned about how, how talented you are. I think, A, that's, that's like one thing we need to talk about and how you how you got to where you are now. And the other thing I want to talk about tonight is um, what the heck is it like to be a mystical man in a mystical woman's world? Hmm. They are, um, (laughs) you know, it's, they're intertwined. Uh, It's just, you know, we just kind of work together. You know, it's a, it's a relationship just like, any other, I would say, I mean, you know, we influence each other. Um, Ava was definitely the, you know, the gatekeeper, so to speak, to, um, to my crystal, you know, obsession, and interest. Um, So, you know, I think, yeah, they, you know, they just feed each other, I get into it, I get into something, and, you know, I share it with her. And then, you know, she's, sharing things with me and um you know we just we just meet at this kind of you know beautiful juncture and for anyone that doesn't know who who ava geyser is she's a very special person to both jude and i one of my best friends and jude's life partner and she's here (laughs) yay (laughs) we actually spoke to ava earlier this week about her business office of oneness there she is hey ava hey everybody Hi, Connie. Hi, I, I get to some... s- see your face twice in one week. <laughs> okay, I'm on battery duty. Yeah, we're <laughs> just okay. We're taking turns with uh, with kid duty. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. While we quarantine. <laughs> so I was hoping um, you could share with everybody about how you came to where you are now as a designer. Hmm. Like, give us your uh, story. What's my story? I mean, really, there wasn't, there wasn't necessarily a decision about it. It just, it's just, it's like part of, you know, who I am in a way. I didn't make a choice to, you know, it was, there was no big decision of like, oh, should I go into, you know, business, uh, you know, or, or study design. It just, there was, there was only really one path, but I guess it, it just, you know, started with drawing all the time and you know being interested in art and um i uh i I found i I found my profession really in uh in art school i went to pratt institute in brooklyn which is how i found my way to brooklyn um and and at that time it wasn't you know what it's become it just you know nobody went there for any reason (laughs) um but I, I went to art school thinking I was going to be an artist of some kind. And I, I then, you know, being there, I, I just dabbled in a lot of different things and sculpture and graphic design. And, you know, it was very 
just different. Um, and, uh, and, and I found by the suggestion of one of my teachers, uh, I was taking a 3D class and he asked me if um, I had seen, or uh, the industrial design department. And uh, I said, no, I didn't even know what industrial design was. And I went up there and, you know, I saw these models of basically, um, you know, it, product design. So, you know, things like um, just everyday objects, you know, models for, you know, perfume bottles or, uh, you know, instruments, um, shoes, cars. And it, for some reason, it just had never dawned on me that that was a profession why i have no idea <laughs> but um but right there i was like oh this is for me and so and so i jumped in and uh from there you know they teach you uh, the, they teach you really how to be a professional designer in, in any realm whether you go into you know textiles or furniture or anything like that and so i started you know working uh in the shop over there you know doing woodworking and metalworking and i just got really hooked to making and um, after school ended, um, my, my friend Bernardo and I started a, a furniture company and that was sort of an like accident. Um, we just, a friend, a friend of his asked him to make a, um, uh, a reception desk for her gallery. And so we, you know, he asked me if I would help him out and we got together and came up with some designs and, you know, we ended up making a, a dining table and because she didn't want a desk you know she just wanted something that was a lot less um, formal and so um, we made this very discreet and simple dining table it's called the Mirabelle table it was named after her and um, yeah we put it in the gallery and we got a lot of attention from it uh, and that kind of started us out and then all of a sudden you know people were interested in what we were doing and, you know, started to contact us about making things. And we we're like, Oh, we gotta, you know, get our act together. So, you know, we got a studio and set up a shop and it just started rolling from there. And that was really how I got into furniture. Um, and I had always, one of the things that I considered in school was being an interior designer. And, um, I, to be honest with you, I, I I hope I don't offend anybody, but I just thought it looked kind of boring. And because um, you just, at that time, you were just making, you know, 2D floor plans and cutting stuff out and, you know, pushing things around on paper and, you know, selecting stuff out of catalogs and, you know, plugging it in. And I, I was a lot more interested in, in like making it, but I didn't have the patience to study architecture. Um, so I... I also simultaneously after school started um, working in event design and I, to me, I thought of that as like temporary interior design. And also, you know, there's like, it, it's an experience, you know, like there's this whole kind of, you know, wow moment and, you know, you're, there's a, there's a theme and, you know, it, it's very, it's very pointed, it's very direct and you have to accomplish certain uh, things, you know, in it and and make this impression and so I, I got into that for a while and um i became the in-house industrial designer at a firm and you know we worked um with a, a lot of like awesome clients like moma and uh cooper hewitt and you know target which um I, you mentioned and um the new york opera and it was just very very cool so a lot of big you know, a lot of big things and a lot of very um, intimidating spaces, but it was cool to just, you know, transform them into something else. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, after that, I, then I got interested in interior design again. <laughs> and um, uh, when I had the, you know, when I was making stuff um, with Bernardo still, uh, I was, I started to, go after, um, you know, trying to find a space to do. And um, I eventually convinced a friend of mine um, who's very entrepreneurial to let me, to let me design a restaurant. At first, you know, he's gonna open a coffee Wait, shop. Wait, what? No, 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 that's not a, just a casual, 
design project. That's <sighs> fucking huge. Yeah, well, it, it, it started, you know, like anything else, it just, it started with conversations. And, uh, you know, he was going to do a lot of different things, you know, like one time he was going to open up a coffee shop and then, um, and then uh, some other kind of retail store. And, you know, the whole time I was just like, give me a chance. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, and then finally, uh, this restaurant opportunity, you know, popped up. And I, um, you know, he's like, hey, you know, I have some partners, so you're gonna have to convince them. So, you know, I had my chance and I, you know, went in and had the meeting with the partners and, you know, I put together all my mood boards and reference images and uh, my enthusiasm and I just got in there and they were like, oh, okay, we'll give you a shot. I mean, I also made them an offer they couldn't refuse, so that helped. <laughs> um, and uh and yeah and and uh when i when i did that i i was the like the, the designer and the contractor so um you know i was i designed the space and i built the space like with him it was like basically two guys built a restaurant and um i'll never do that again because <laughs> <laughs> well, like out for an entire year um i mean it it, 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 it got, like consumed your soul yeah, I, I mean, I just went overboard. I, I mean, I just used so many reserves of my energy that, you know, I, I was I was up on stilts. And by the time the project ended, you know, my my body and immune system and everything just totally collapsed. And, uh, oh. you know, I just I was I was literally tired for a whole year. Um, and and, you know, I just, I was ignoring everything my body was telling me because I was so excited. So, you know, you, you like learn things along the way. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Feeling like roadkill, even for your dreams, sucks. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> yeah. It's always entertaining to look back, but, you know, <laughs> that's why you do things to learn lessons, right? I mean. Totally. Let it, let it all be your teacher. Yeah. Yeah. So Jude to me is like, super mysterious so when i met jude when ava and jude started dating i knew him as this um like amazing designer of swanky ass fixie bikes i remember that very <laughs> specifically and i was like oh my god these are the most beautiful bikes i've ever seen and then i like flew back to la and came back a little later and then all of a sudden all that furniture behind jude by the way is his that that moon glowing moon mirror on the wall which we'll get to and then i you know i go back to la again and then all of a sudden he's um designing space for refinery 29's 29 rooms i mean jude you're just like all, all over, over the place with your talent <laughs> yeah Some, so, sometimes i feel like i'm too scattered no so yeah. how did you get though like because i i feel like from just again watching your process and i know as you said ava came into your life and she's a mystical force of nature as we both know um how did you get from fixie bikes to that moon mirror behind you i mean you know i just keep all the channels open all the time um you know it's like my interests are broad and you know i think that's part of the like industrial design background uh you know because in in that profession you kind of it's like a crash course on how to design anything uh and you you just have uh you know you're kind of you just ask a lot of questions and you know i'm really curious so um you know i ask a lot of questions and um you know the the, the things that i am curious about i just look for ways to do them uh so the um the bike project came about um in a, a a very sort of natural but also you know odd channel like i had designed a um a doctor's office <laughs> yeah, on 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 park avenue actually and for regenerative medicine um very interesting uh gentleman dr uh holland and um he and he and i have you know become like friends since you know he was he was happy with the office and um so was i <laughs> and we um you know kept in touch and he 
which was surprising to me at first, but he goes to, um, he goes to Burning Man every year. Yes. And, um, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't know that side of Burning Man at all. Um, but it's, you know, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot going on there. And so he goes, uh, every year and he, uh, you know, came back and told me about the, the playa and, you know, all the vehicles and everything. And he told me that he wanted his own vehicle. Um, and he had this idea that, he, that he wanted to make an electric bike with a detachable, uh, sidecar. And, um, you know, the, the reason for it being detachable was, you know, I, essentially freedom. You know, you could have your, your regular electric bike that you could kind of around like a, ride around like a bicycle or motorcycle and cruise and be free. And then the sidecar you could attach and it was a way that you could, you know, pick up friends and ride around. He also wanted to make it like a bar car at night. So it would be outfitted, um, <laughs> you know, with, with stuff like that. And, you know, he, there's also an airport out there. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it was used as like a, like a cargo vehicle, you know, he's like picking up friends and packages from, the airport and transporting it to camp so it was this like utilitarian vehicle and it, it was just it was very intriguing and um yeah i mean he you know i I'm, i was i should say um an avid cyclist i mean when i lived in the city i mean i didn't yeah you know, i i could barely use the subway i would always get out in the wrong direction because um i always ride my bike and so, uh, so, you know, I'd show up to our meetings and stuff, you know, getting off my bike and he just knew I was an enthusiast. And, um, I actually growing up, I was, I was a, a bike mechanic, <laughs> um, at a bike shop in, uh, Southampton. Was that your high school job? Uh, college. No, I actually got that job when I was 13 years old. <laughs> I, because... Are you even like legal to work at 13? <laughs> no, I, well, I was an intern at first, but okay. I, um, I just refused to go to summer camp. It was just, I was just over it. And I, you know, I just wanted to ride my bike all the time. And, uh, you know, my parents were like, you got to do something productive with yourself. And it was actually my stepmom's idea. She's like, why don't you go work at that bike shop? And, um, I, you know, I was like too shy to go over there, but she ended up going over there with me and the owner, Rick, who's like super, just kind of took me under his wing. And I, I worked there for like many, many summers. And, you know, that was my first real dive into mechanics. So, you know, learning how to build bikes and tune them and all that. Um, so yeah, so that was my foundation. And then Holland knew that. So he approached me about making that bike and, um, I ended up teaming up with uh, this guy, uh, Tom Callahan, who owns a, uh, he's a custom bike builder. He um, has a shop in Brooklyn called Horse Cycles. They make, well, I mean, he's an artist. They make like exquisite, exquisite bikes. And um, I was connected to him through a friend and he and I hit it off and uh, we did the project together. You know, I brought in my design expertise and what I knew about bikes. I mean, he's like an expert uh, and we just, you know, collaborated and made it happen and, um, you know, became friends in the process and it was just like super fun. And, and you know, the bike went out to, to Burning Man and it worked. <laughs> And uh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You do not want to be stuck out there with a broken no. bike. <laughs> you know, I, and, and you know, like some projects, you know, you plan and just things just happen. So it was it was down to the wire, and you know, it's like the the thing got, you know, essentially assembled and and put in a crate like the day before it had to go out there. So you know, we did we did our due diligence with testing and everything, but you know, it's still. You always wish you had more time for any project, um, but it went out. It went out there and 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 did it. And it worked, and it's been out there. I think, I think three times already. Um, so yeah, so that was the bike. That was the bike project. Uh, and well, sorry, what what else did you ask me? <laughs> <laughs> I asked you all kinds of questions. I I mean, I originally had asked you how how you'd basically gotten from designing sexy bikes to designing the furniture that's behind you, which I think we yeah. should talk about. If you can. Yeah, I can take you on a little mini tour. 
Yeah, I want to go on a tour. So everyone, Jude's furniture is amazing, as you're about to see. And again, he always surprises me. Um, him and Ava called me. And again, I was like, wait, what? Jude designs furniture? I was confused at first. Um, and they're like, yeah, he's going to be at the um, Architectural Digest show. Yeah, the big one. And he has this whole area filled with furniture. Will you come do crystal readings at Jude's table? And I was like, of course I'll do that. So I get there and Jude, I literally like, I almost cried because I just like, I saw all of that furniture sitting there together. And again, I was like, <laughs> I just didn't even know Jude <laughs> made furniture. And then after seeing it, and um, I know you're going to talk about the concept and, you know, your influence from the moon and from crystals and everything. It's just so beautiful. Okay, I'll stop talking and take us on a tour of your mystical furniture. All right. I'll get off my track. Oh, and Satnam also wants to know if you're a Pisces. Uh, Aries. An air. Oh. Aries. <laughs> All right. Here. So, uh, well, this is actually the amplifier table. Got one right. Oh, yeah. There Got she one. is. Got one of my favorite crystals on it. And um, here we'll go over here. I, I put some inside for the viewing. <gasps> yeah, we got a piece of uh, a tiger's eye right there. And there's some rose quartz in the back. And um, um, I don't know, I'm blanking on, on this one. Can you tell me? Oh, you're getting a lot of hearts for that. It looks like from the camera, it looks like blue appetite. It is. It's exactly is Ava close? Like, yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, um, and this, so this table is made of, of crystal. It's made of quartz. The, the whole, the whole thing is a solid piece of quartz, um, which is pretty awesome. And, uh, and that was actually, yeah, this piece was designed um, actually after uh, working with Colleen. Um, we, we did an apartment, uh, Colleen, I designed an apartment and Colleen uh, punctuated it. And um, during that process, she told me, I learned that uh, quartz is a natural amplifier of other crystals. And that just, you know, resonated with me. And I, I you know, that's where this table came from was that concept. Uh, so, yeah. And, and so here we go. No, wait a minute. I can't even call that. Go back there. The crystal table, the the amplifier table. It's like, it's not a coffee. I mean, that thing's like an altar, Jude. It's yeah, so yeah. beautiful. Uh, sorry. Um, we need to we need to stare at this thing more. Yeah, you're getting all kinds of hearts and smiley faces on this one. So, um, so besides this table being fucking just beautiful to look at. As Jude was saying, since clear quartz is an amplifier, that you can actually put your crystals on there and you're amplifying the vibration of what your intentions are. And it, it's also, it's in theory, a coffee table. I think it's an altar, but. Um, well, yeah, I mean, that's how it started. Um, it started as an altar, um, but then when I kind of put it up for show, it became a coffee table. <laughs> because you know people would get it and use it as, as that as a function. But I think that's really interesting actually, because um, then it becomes almost like a communal altar in a way um, and sort of a secret altar, which is fun. So, you know, if you're having a gathering and you have a certain intention for the gathering, you know, you can put your crystals, whatever you're, you know, working with or whatever speaking to you at the time and you can kind of put them in there and like hold that intention and it, uh, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll resonate on through. So, um, so, you know, I think that that's, I think that's kind of cool. And that's super cool. Yeah. And you could also, you could also use it as an altar. I mean, I do. <laughs> do you use it as a community altar or are they just your crystals on there? Uh, these are, I mean, these are my, personal ones that are on here right now but yeah I, you know yeah. if you want to come over and bring your crystals let's do it Thotnam wants to know how much that bad boy is um it, it's 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 pretty pricey which is basically because of the material but it starts at around 11k um you know i honestly i wish that it was um 
I honestly wish that it was less, but it's just, you know, cost of materials. You know, it's a giant crystal, so you guys know how much you pay for crystals that you hold in your hands. So, you know, imagine yeah. it weighs a few hundred pounds. That thing is like a sexy crystal thug. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've, I found some other um, species that um, that I really want to work with. Actually, like this guy over here, you know, this piece of lapis uh, lazuli and... I, I, I found a piece of this that's like five by 10 feet. Really? Yeah. And, um, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty badass. Um, it costs probably as much as BMW to buy, but, um, <laughs> yeah, you know, put it out there. Okay. I like it. I, I, yeah. I hope I get to see that thing first after you're <laughs> done making it. Oh my God. The lapis is, I mean, a lapis I love, um, you know, not only for its meaning, you know, it's about opening up your throat chakra and speaking, but of course it's like, it's color. I mean, it's like ink blue. Yeah. Just, you know, it comes out of the earth like that. It's just wild. So beautiful. And it's nice too, because uh, besides, since lapis also has bits of iron pyrite in, it's, it's communication and, and manifestation. So you get a little bit of both with that one. Yeah. I like it. Okay, Jude, where are you taking us next in your sexy mystical furniture world? All right, so <clears throat> this is at home, you know, at my house, usually there's just a lot of prototypes around and that's what's here. So um, in the corner, we have the uh, Gibbous Corner Cabinet. Um, it's a little dark in here. Let me see if I can turn the light up. Uh, but this guy was actually, so here, I'll come up and, you know, it has this touch, you just push it and then it opens. Um, you can't, it's too dark to see in there, but essentially it's a china cabinet. And this is a uh, maple, and then we have, this is solid brass, and then this is um, English bridal leather that's over maple. And, you know, there's storage in there. And this actually, um, you know, kind of matches the vibe of the chair, that, that detail, you can see the leather wrapping around the maple and I, I carried that through, you know, with the door here. So, you know, they're a family of furniture, but this guy was also uh, actually designed off uh, some uh, feng shui principles. You know, I learned, this is one of the things I learned through you too, Colleen, um, was that, you know, energy can get stuck in corners. And I've always thought corners were an interesting sort of you know, design problem in a lot of ways. Um, I, you know, I like, I like smooth corners, you know, some of the spaces I design, I can, you know, I do curved walls, which is awesome. So this was a way to bring, you can see at the top, you know, that it's a curved piece. So the cabinet face is curved um, to keep the energy moving. I love that. And, uh, yeah. And then you know, this is the gibbous chair. Oh, and by the way, so Gibbous is um, after the Gibbous moon. And uh, these pieces were designed actually after tracing uh, the lunar calendar. You know, I came up with the, with the curved shapes. Uh, so yes, yeah, so this is the Gibbous chair, which is, you know, part of the family of this. Uh, the table I could put a picture up of, I don't have it here. This is one of my earlier pieces, this table. Um, which is the primary table. And um, the base, the triangular base is made of steel. And the top is uh, what they call white walnut. It, the light is making it look very yellow in here, but these are actually um, a lot whiter in person. Um, but yeah, this, this piece was designed for a store called the Primary Essentials. And um, I actually made, she, the, one, the girl who owns it, uh, Lauren, it's, um, a friend of mine, she wanted a, like a 20 foot table for her store. And she liked this sort of industrial chic look. And so together we kind of came up with the language of that piece. And then, you know, people would come in the store and ask if it could be made in a dining table version. And so that's where that piece came from. And then, um, these benches are called the muse bench. And that's hard to see in here. Um, 
you know, it's a very simple design, but you can see, you can see the V, this kind of like V shape in the top, right? And that carries through the legs and it just goes, you know, up and over. And there's no, there's no support underneath. It's just that V all the way through. So it's very clean and it has the tapered legs. And that was a piece that um, I designed with Bernardo when we had our first furniture company called Baron Lion. Um, and that, that was like, that was our, one of our first pieces. After the, bench the table, was. after the table that I told you about for the gallery, we made, we made that bench to, um, complement it. So yeah, so that, oh, and I didn't. Wait a minute. What about, <laughs> what about the giant glowing moon behind you, sir? <laughs> okay. Oh, that so, old thing? Yeah. <laughs> so this, this is called the, um, the rising moon mirror. And you can see, cause it looks like it's sort of rising out of the, the floor and uh, also inspired by the moon. And it looks dark because it is, it's actually, I mean, it's a gray mirror, so it's almost black. And so it has this sort of portal like quality and um, <clears throat> it's on, it's on a dimmer. So, you know, you can dial it up, you know, light up the room more. Oh, actually I should have done that earlier. You can kind of see the colors of these better. Um, or you can bring it down. You can bring it down really, really low where it, it almost doesn't, you're almost questioning whether it's, it's lit or not. Um, so you're taking us from like makeup lighting to sexy light. Exactly. <laughs> and that's exactly the plan. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, so, um, yeah, so that is the, the rising moon mirror and that, that was sort of born out of, uh, you know, a lot of my pieces are born out of projects and, um, I, I designed a space and we wanted that to kind of um, open the space up. So it ended up being uh, almost on a mantle. And so it looked like it was rising out of a mantle. And uh, yeah, and, and you know, the light's an added benefit. It doesn't have to be on at all. I actually keep it on here to test it. So um, that light has been on since we moved into this house. In <laughs> So for a month. A month, yeah. 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 So wow. Yeah, I mean, it's been on for almost nine months. Satnam um, has a question for you about your bench. So I'm just going to read this. So is there, yeah. is there properties of physics in the design of the bench? Meaning, do the angles of cuts create opposing forces to create structure? Kind of, sort of like an arch. Exactly, Mundo. <laughs> yeah, you nailed it, man. Um, basically that V is the structure. So it's twofold. It, you know, it, it adds, um, comfort. So it kind of like scoops your butt when you sit on it. It's not like sitting on a flat plank and actually when people sit on it, they often remark like, Oh, this is pretty comfortable. Uh, so yeah, so it has that and, uh, and yeah, that V basically translate translates into the structure. So at the legs, when it meets, um, it's, you know, self-supporting. Good eye. Good eye. Jude, what's your favorite crystal? It's a tough one, you know, like that can, that can, that can change, you know, with your mood. It's like, oh. you know, it's like, what, what do you need at the time when, uh, when you're being asked? Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of people, I mean, I, I often get the question like, oh, like, you know, who's your, you know, who's your favorite designer? What's your favorite piece? Or, you know, it's like being asked what your, favorite band is, um, I, I would say, I would say, honestly, it is, I have a piece of phantom quartz and I, and I think that, I think that it's my favorite. Um, oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, it, you could, you can see the, like the crystalline structure underneath how it like naturally forms, uh, hexagonal structures and you can actually in this one, see it layering up. So it's like, you can, you can see like time captured in this piece. And also, you know, the word crystal in, in Greek basically means like ice. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I, I think there's something cool about that. It's again, has to do with this like frozen quality. It's like, you know, you're, you've, you've got a time capsule here. Um, 
and you know quartz being the amplifier that it is it's sort of like you know og it's like everything everything kind of revolves around quartz it's to me it's the uh it's like the you know the foundation that's that's how i feel about it so um so yeah that would be it <laughs> and speaking of bands as a man of mystery can we talk about one of your other former careers what your band oh <laughs> I, I yeah i've been in a couple um but that well, actually my my friend who um who i convinced to let me design his restaurant that's how that's how we met um we were both a death metal band <laughs> names it was named face death fuck yeah <laughs> so, um, yeah that was, that, was, that was a good time i actually just sold one of my amplifiers a real amplifier. <laughs> uh, uh, Not a crystal one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yesterday on 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 Craigslist, um, I have this big stack just sitting in my sitting in my studio. Well, not my studio, but my my studio, my house. Um, you know, and it's like the size of a refrigerator. And um, you know, even I, it's funny. I I turned it on, you know, just to make sure it was all in working order before I sold it. And, and Aroha came out. Aroha, for you guys who don't know, is, is my stepson, he's six. And he wanted me to, um, you know, play it. And it was on one. And I hit a chord on one on my guitar and he instantly started crying because it was too loud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, so it's a beast, so I had to. Uh, Satnam wants to know if it was an Ampeg or a Sun. Am I supposed to Ampeg, or a Sun? Bro, is an Ampeg uh 1973 ampeg v4 with a v2 cabinet um yeah i have four twelves in it and uh 100 watt 100 watt head all tube is a, a powerhouse i miss her somebody on here that i think knows you said i still have a face test sticker on my old snowboard <laughs> <laughs> yeah they were around they were around they were around Britain for a while too <laughs> Okay, so your favorite crystal changes with the weather. Do you have any crystals in your pockets right now? Uh, I don't have any pockets in the pants I'm wearing. Yeah, it's sort of a waste up. Is that a design thing? <laughs> what? It's minimal like your bench and all the rest of your furniture? No, I just, I just figured I didn't have to put real pants on for this interview. So. Do you have pants on? I do have pants on, yes. Okay, but, just, I mean, um, that's a fair question right now. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I, I won't mean, prove it, but I do. I've been going to some of my Zoom calls, obviously, like dress nice on the top and yoga pants and house slippers on the bottom. So that's, it's I, a fair question. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's like a bust interview. Just hear up. That's right. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Are you wearing pants? I am wearing pants. I have on, I just have on uh, yoga pants and pink slippers, pink fuzzy slippers nice but i have this like so you know goes. i had a um i had a corporate zoom client today so i had to you know get it together on the top mm -hmm. put makeup on brush my hair you know, put on my that... biggest crystal <laughs> uh, oh that th i have one of those in the in the window oh you do yeah the herkimers uh no it, it's a quartz that i got from you um oh. when you did when you uh feng shui my apartment oh the one for uh for for protecting the space it has nine sides right nine is for um nine is the number of completion that's right yeah so i know it, it looks like that anyway um, but yeah, it's all about comfort, right? Gotta be That's comfort. right. <laughs> um, so what was the first thing you ever designed? I don't, I don't, I don't even know. Uh, I mean, I used to draw cars when I was a kid. Um, but you know, I don't, it, it didn't make it off the, off the drawing table. <laughs> uh, but I, I mean, the first thing maybe that like, was designed was made was designed and made yeah um 
man i i honestly it probably it probably didn't happen until college i, I actually I, I was thinking about this uh not too long ago i had a, a magazine interview and and they asked like what um they were asking about my skills my skill set and i i didn't learn woodworking until i went to college um I, I had no skills i actually remember uh being in my dad's basement in high school and i had this idea to make a, a sculpture out of <clears throat> some two by fours that were you know around and um you know i got my screw gun and i got some screws and i screwed it together and it like the wood just split apart and i was sort of shocked i was like what how did that happen and um you know i realized right there that there's a lot more to it than you know just slapping boards together so um actually okay you know what? i just remembered you know what the first thing i made was what? my when when i was a kid um probably around like you know 10 11 12 um m my cousin matt and i he lives in massachusetts we'd i'd go up to visit him uh, and his family often and he and i used to hang out and his uh his dad was um into f like flipping houses um so they would always buy like the first house in the subdivision and then in, it would fill up and then they would sell their house and make some money and move to the next subdivision and so because he always lived in subdivisions that were being developed and i was there on the weekends we would always go into these houses that were under construction and uh go dumpster dive in and see what we could see and we would collect uh scrap wood and uh and and make tree houses and so um that would that was the first thing that i would think that i was a part of making was a tree house with my cousin oh that's cool yeah and i fell off it <laughs> <laughs> after it was done <laughs> um yeah that was cool that was cool that was i haven't thought about that in a long time and then I, I remember that we made we tried to make a boat after after like our our maybe our second or third tree house real because one of the subdivisions was on a lake at the bottom of the cul-de-sac and we were like let's make a boat man get out there <laughs> and so we got some plywood and we like screwed it together mm -hmm. my my cousin was like you gotta caulk it you gotta you gotta caulk it so that the water <laughs> come in so we found we found some linoleum flooring in one of the houses you know we didn't take it was like scrap linoleum we didn't steal it just want to everybody know that uh and uh we, we we caulked all the seams and we put the linoleum floor and we thought we waterproofed the thing and we we put it on our skateboards and we went down to the end of the cul-de-sac and we put it in the water and we pushed it out and we jumped in and we got about 10 feet and i think sunk <laughs> <laughs> it took on water immediately uh, which we ended up being thankful for because uh you know better being 10 feet out than you know 50 feet with all your clothes on and no life jackets and not even a real paddle so <laughs> yeah um and what do you think would be on your i won't even say wish list to you i'll say manifestation list because i know you'll make it happen um, what's on that list for like the thing you want to design next? Because you can, in my opinion, design anything. You know, I, I've, I've been in our house now for like over two months that I've been here every day with this quarantine mm -hmm. and, um, you know, this, this lockdown has just got, you know, has our, has us going through so many like waves of emotion with what's going on. And um, I, I actually finally, like two weeks ago, surrendered to it. I think I was trying to fight it at first. And I was, you know, I was going, was getting really angry and getting really depressed and all this stuff. And I finally just let it all go. And I've felt really great since. Um, but in that time since I've been here, um, I've gotten to like connect with our property, like a lot. Um, we, you know, we got this house. And uh, it's a, it's like a seventies ranch. It's, it's, needs some, some TLC, but yeah, I'll, I've been dreaming about that and I'll get to that. I'm actually going to set up a little wood shop in our garage, um, soon and, uh, work on the house a little bit, but, uh, with 
connecting with the land, um, there's just a lot of stuff that I want to do out on, on the property. Um, there's a little pond here. So I want to make a little kind of like, you know, Zen area down there. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of fallen trees. So I'm going to like start working with, with like fallen wood. Um, we had, uh, Araha school had a, um, a, like a winter celebration in, I guess it was January, no, February, um, before this all went down and, um, there was like a fundraiser and I ended up making some, uh, some stools out of some fallen trees. And that was really cool. Just gathering wood, you know, from the forest and cleaning it up and, you know, just having that kind of relationship with it, you know, with all my other furniture, you know, you go to the, the lumber yard and you yeah. make boards and that's a lot different experience than like going into the forest. Um, so I guess that's my long way of telling you that I want to sort of get, get more grassroots with a lot of the materials that I'm working with. And, um, yes, yeah, so work on a property, make, make the, uh, oh, I want to make some camp, like a little camping area out in the woods, like clear it and make a path. Um, you know, I'm not going to like take any trees down, but I'm just going to like make a path and kind of like set up in there so you can have like a little retreat space. Uh, and then also in this quarantine time, I've been drawing like crazy. Um, I've, I've probably, I've drawn so many chairs. So once the wood shop is set up in the garage, I'm going to start making chair prototypes. Um, but I, I think, I think, you know, up here, I'd also like to work on, um, you know, a space that can kind of bring people together in a lot of ways, like whether it's a, like a retreat space or, you know, yoga space or um, just sort of something communal that is inspiring that, you know, everyone can share um, and be inspired by or, you know, just uh, be a part of. So yeah, just getting involved in the community and something for the community. I'm, I'm really excited to hear that, um, you know, every, everything we need is, is normally right in front of us. So I think that's, I think that's really beautiful that you're going to go out and let the land speak to you. Yeah. It'll, it will, it will show you the way that's for sure. You're, you're like on a furniture spirit walk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it feels, it, it, you know, I'm, it's like, you know, I think of uh, Ava's like shaman work and your shaman work. It's like, you know, I'm getting to know Pachamama, yeah. and, uh, having her talk to me. And I, I actually, I, you know, I picked up your book uh, two days ago. Uh, in thinking Did you find it. something interesting in there? Well, there's a lot that's interesting. But the, the thing that, that, that really struck me was um, your, you interviewed uh, Kirby, who cuts crystals. Yes. And um, he said something really interesting or profound i would say that he um you know he was having this sort of existential moment with crystal cutting like that he wasn't you know worthy or how could he you know take something from the earth and um and 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 cut it like what gives him the right to do that and he went to uh he was visiting some he was visiting a crystal museum. I can't remember where he visited, but there was a giant piece of quartz that he sat on and like meditated on for some time. And the material, the, the crystal spoke to him and said that, you know, it was okay that the, it gave him permission to, to do his work. And, um, you know, he realized that he was honoring the material in doing his work. And then as long as he let the material speak to him and he honored it um, and what it was trying to say, that um, it was okay. And I really like that. And, um, you know, I, I, I feel a similar way. You know, I don't like to make things in excess or do them unnecessarily. And, you know, all material is precious. So even when I make stuff here, it's like I save every scrap, uh, which can becomes a, sometimes a problem, but you know, it's like, I don't want to, I don't want to just chuck it. So whether it's, you know, here we have a, you know, I built a fire pit. So whether it's, you know, it goes in, into a fire ceremony or, um, or it sticks around for a while, 
and be turns into something else. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff that I make that I don't show that's just personal uh, or experimentation. And that's, yeah, that, that's, that using all the material is, is important and letting it speak to you and honoring it is, is important as well. So you're trying to keep your creations in, in Aini or in right relationship with the earth and being thoughtful. Yeah. 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 Thoughtful, conscious, you know, connected, you know, you gotta like, it's, it's a connection. It's like a relationship. So, so yeah. Okay. The last thing I'm going to ask you and then I'll let you go, Jude. All right. um, as far as like your, ins your inspirations from a mystical standpoint, like what have you read? What have you studied? Where did you go? What did you touch? What did you experience that kind of is, is building that mm. side for you? Uh, you know, it, 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 to be really open about it. I mean, it all started with uh, my spiritual journey all started with yoga and psychedelics. Okay. Sort of simultaneously. Um, and, and they were like the right match, uh, you know, like they, and, and I, I learned, you know, it was, the, it was the first time I learned about this sort of mind, body, spirit connection and the metaphysical body. And like the more that I tuned my body and mind together, like how much better I am, how much better I showed up, how much more present I was, how, you know, much more grounded I was and all that stuff. And, um, yeah, and, and, you know, that kind of led into other things. I started to really open up, you know, realizing, excuse me, that there's this whole other side to things. I mean, bef bef before either of those two things, the world, you know, was very three-dimensional. <laughs> but there's a lot more than three dimensions. I mean, it's, you know, we live in a multi-dimensional universe, and there's a lot more than we can see and touch and, you know, pick up with our senses that kind of runs through us um, and that we can connect to if, if we give ourselves the opportunity uh, to access those things. And so, you know, all these other modalities, whether they're, you know, crystals or meditation or a sound bath or, you know, feng shui or shamanism or, um, you know, uh, psychedelic trips they're all different access points um and feelings uh that you know that 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 bring a new reality and a, a new side to reality uh and and i'm really inspired by all of them so i you know i jump into them just as my as my curiosity you know like yeah. as i have a, you know uh an interest in them so it, it's not there, there's no path, I mean, for, for me with those things. It's just I have an interest and I start exploring it. And my way of exploring those things is usually in, in, in my work with ends up, you know, being making something. Um, and that's, that's how I manifest it. But um, did that answer your question? Yeah, totally. You, you like to... Uh... So yoga and psychedelics. So you like to bend and stretch your body and mind. Yes. <laughs> yes. Super stretchy. Yeah. I love it. It's flexible. Super. <laughs> so Jude, um, before we get off, I want everybody to know where they can find you. So what's your, your website and your Insta? Uh, it's, it's all my name, which happens to be very long, but it's Jude. Heslin, H E S L I N, Dileo, D I L E O. Um, it, I mean, we're on Instagram, so you know, that's my handle, and that's also my website. And um, yeah, I, uh, the amplifier table is is at uh, Matter Store in in the city, which you know is closed right now because of what's going on in the world. But um, you can see it there, and um, you know other most of my work I whatever just just hit me up I, hit me up if you want to talk about it hit you up and <laughs> if you want to talk about death metal or get bendy and stretchy with Jude there we go <laughs>
I was just, I was just talking about crystals. So. We're talking about crystals. Yeah, I love it all. All right. Well, you have a really good night. Tell Ava and Aroha I said hi, and I love them also. And I just want to say thank you for your your time and your your energy, and I appreciate you, Jude. Oh, I love you, Ma. Thank you for having me, and um, yes, yeah, great to be here. I mean, I was admittedly very nervous uh, when I started, but it, it's it's been really it's been really enjoyable. Cool. And, and really nice to share. Well, I will. Uh, we'll do another crystals and cocktails when you build something from the land in your garage. I want to see what you come up with. Yeah, maybe we can get out. <laughs> yeah, totally. All right. Okay. Bye, Jude. Bye, Colleen. Bye, everybody. Thank you.